remaining until now, we have one last speaker that I'm going to uh, invite right now on stage with me. Hello, Raymond, and good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, but I cannot see you. All right, one second. I did do the test. And I did start video and oh, okay. I see one second. Yes, I can it, see you now. Windows loves to pick like the only camera you don't use. <laughs> like here's a list of cameras. You use this one every day, but I'm going to default to one you installed in 1995. Nobody can understand that logic. <laughs> Let's hope that maybe AI will figure it out. <laughs> Let's hope, yes. <laughs> uh, I know it's uh, very early for you, so I'm really glad you could join us. Thank you. And really happy to ha have you around. And uh, I, I see that we have an, an interesting topic as, as well with Gemini today, but I think this is one that's going to be completely different than what we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious uh, how it works in this case. And uh, Raymond, you have the stage. I'm not going to go into too many presentations right now. I think uh, everybody's eager to hear you. Sure. So you have the stage. Cool. Let me uh, share screen and entire screen. And you all should be seeing my screen OK, I hope. Yes. All right. I I will take it from here. Thank you so much. All right. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. <laughs> I think I'm probably the outlier here. Uh, it is 5.40 a.m. in Louisiana right now. Shockingly, this is the first day without massive storms, so I am happy that it is relatively quiet. And because I said that, it's going to roll in like midway through my talk. Um, I am Raymond Camden. I am a developer evangelist for Adobe, uh, typically focused on much more boring things than, than Gen AI. Uh, but uh, if you have any needs for doing <clears throat> any kind of document management at scale or uh, working with Firefly, for example, uh, that is something that you could reach out to me and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. My website is RaymondCamden.com. You can leave me a note there. Uh, you are also absolutely welcome to send me an email if you have any questions uh, about what I am talking about today. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you want a copy of these slides, uh, this repository, and I am going to drop it in chat right now. Uh, doo -doo -doo. That should be it. Yep. All right, if you would like a copy of this slide deck, uh, it's in chat, it's on screen now. Uh, all the code samples are also in the repository as well. Uh, it's everything you need to test everything I'll be showing today, except for obviously an API key, but I'll talk about that in a second. So my, <clears throat> my basic assumptions and some kind of warnings about what's gonna uh, come up here. Uh, what I think about what you probably know, and I'll talk about what I know. Uh, I'm not going to explain what an LLM is, what Gen AI is, because I feel like um, if you're like me and have attended any conference in the last six months, there's about 200 sessions that are intro uh, and explain all those terms. I assume at this point that we have a rough idea of what's going on here. Uh, you will need a little bit of Node.js knowledge. I picked Node for my code samples. Uh, but everything I'm showing is going to be super, super simple. Uh, so if you don't speak Node, that is okay. Uh, this is my first time giving this talk, and my plan is actually to make a Python version as well, so I can flip back and forth to the audience. Bye. And I, uh, okay. I <laughs> so very much we had, uh, we feel like a noob one. at this. Um, so now let's. Uh, I feel like our next speaker. Up until recently, I had no idea how Gen AI worked. Um, it, was, it, was, it was magic, basically. Uh, the good news is that after four or five, six months or so of plugging away at this, uh, I no longer know nothing, uh, but I have a really good idea of how little I know. 
uh, which is still a move up. <laughs> and and my, my hope is that after kind of showing you some examples uh, that I will give you the tools so that you could be like me and that you could actually start working with this and start beginning to uh, learn more of the more advanced stuff. But essentially, uh, if you know at a high level what Gen AI is, that's all you're going to need to know for today. So the good news that I'm going to start off with um, is that working with Gen AI and especially Gemini uh, is actually really, really simple. Um, I, I was shocked by this, <laughs> uh, actually, also a little scared. Like uh, first couple of times I ran this, I'm like, I'm I'm doing something wrong for it to be this easy. Um, <laughs> I'm probably uh, creating a bill of a thousand dollars every time I make a uh, syntax error, um, and because I'm testing so much and it's going so quick, I must be doing something so wrong for it to be that easy. And it using Gen AI, at least with, with Gemini and so far what I've seen in other ones as well, is relatively easy. Uh, the bad news is that correctly using it is is a whole other matter. Um, I, I spent the beginning of my career, first 10 plus years or so, uh, working in a back-end technology called Cold Fusion. And if you've never heard of it, you could think of PHP, ASP, you know, essentially an, an application language running on your server that would spit out HTML. And that's how I built dynamic websites for a, for a very long time. And all of these languages uh, have a feature typically where it's really easy to hook up to a database of some sort. And one of the things I learned early on is that, oh, you know, it's easy to connect to a SQL server. And it's easy uh, to write a SQL query and get data and use it on my web app. And that, yeah, that was great. And one of the first things you run into performance wise is that bad SQL will drag down your entire web application. And you learn, oh, okay. So it was easy to plop that SQL uh, command in my code. I actually have to think about how I write my query and I have to actually think about my database and all that. And so, you know, my, my language made it easy to, to use the SQL, uh, but proper SQL was, was super important. And that is incredibly important when it comes to working with your prompts. Um, when I get to the code in a minute or two, you'll see that uh, the actual sending the prompt to Gemini uh, is not that big of a deal at all. But that is where you need to spend the most time is actually ensuring that, that the prompt is good. So... Uh, again, like I said a uh, slide or two ago, I have gone from knowing nothing to knowing what I need to learn more about, and working on my prompts is, is part of that. In fact, one of the things that I've done for my own learning is I've, I've built a couple of different tools uh, that uh, make it easier for me to test prompts out, and I'll show you uh, some examples of that as well. So Google Gemini uh, has gone through multiple names. Uh, if you've been in this industry for any amount of time, you know that naming things is hard. It started off as Bard in uh, February of 2023. And I did pause there for a second because I had to think about what year it was. Uh, relaunched as Gemini months later. Uh, API access came around in October uh, via Palm. And uh, if you go to my blog and look at my post about Gemini, you'll, you'll see me talking about Palm first and then quickly to uh, to Gemini not long after. One thing you don't want to forget is that when Google talks about Gemini, there is also like a public facing chat app called Gemini as well. And I know I've been confused before when I hear, oh, Gemini launched some new feature and I'm thinking, wait, well, I've had that for a while. And the issue is that Again, they will talk about the API, they'll talk about the public facing app, and they'll go back and forth. Uh, and to make things even more confusing, that there's also Vertex as well. And I'm going to not even think about that until later on in the slide deck to not make things even more confusing. By the way, when I was researching this, um, apparently there was a live stream in February showing Bard from, from Paris. 
and the live stream went so bad. The demo went so bad. Google stock fell 8%, equivalent to about $100 billion. Now, as someone who, you know, their job is to get on stage and show demos of code, I have a whole new thing to be terrified about now that <laughs> I will do something that will drag down Google or Adobe stock by 10%. That's that's a life goal to uh, look forward to. Uh, but Gemini is what we're, is what we're talking about. Uh, there are multiple resources here, and I'm not going to click on any of these, uh, but you have like the marketing homepage at aigoogle.dev. Uh, you have AI Studio that we'll be showing in a couple seconds. You have plenty of docs and support for them. Um, one thing I'll say about the docs is that when I uh, mentioned earlier that actually using Gemini was so easy, uh, I don't hit the docs very often, actually. It's typically for uh, reference to make sure I'm passing a parameter a certain way or whatever. Uh, but uh, basic usage is so trivial that uh, I don't necessarily need the docs all the time. Uh, in terms of the models that you have available, and just as a pro tip, uh, never agree to talk about a Google topic in the same week as Google I.O. Uh, it did not even occur to me when I agreed to that, that I'd, I'd be talking right after a huge dev conference. Uh, luckily, uh, I've only had to tweak the slides a couple different ways based on what was announced. Uh, but... Right now, in terms of the models, you can have access to 1.0 Pro, 1.5 Pro, and Flash. Uh, this was actually one of, the, one of the things that was announced Tuesday, I believe. Um, and this is really changing quickly. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind in terms of uh, what you're doing. Uh, there's going to be more at the docs. I'm going to be primarily focusing on the pro model. Uh, and let me actually let me actually go back and uh, talk about Flash real quick. Uh, the way that Flash has been explained to me, and I, I believe they even said on stage at I.O., is that essentially it's going to be faster, but not as good. So that is one of those times where you have to think about what you're doing and decide if speed is so super important that you're okay with the results being not the best. Uh, if you are curious about how Pro uh, compares to Flash, a couple days ago on my blog, and I'll, I'll point to this later uh, this morning, um, I actually built a web app that lets you type in a prompt. It sends it both to Pro and Flash, and it shows you the timings for both as well as the results back. So you can kind of compare. Um, I can say in general, Flash seems to be about three or four times quicker, but it really depended on the input you sent in. So if I send an incredibly simple prompt, they were, you know, Flash was a little quicker, but it was all, it almost uh, wouldn't matter. Um, on a longer prompt, the differences got bigger. So 1.5 Pro has a huge context, by the way, if uh, the word context confuses you, one way to think of it is simply it's the size of your input. And that includes an hour of video, 9.5 hours of audio, 3,600 images, and uh, around 1,000 pages of text or so. You can also send 30,000 lines of code. Um, I am probably the only developer working with Gen AI who has not done a lot of code generation or code analysis. Uh, I've been more focused on text, on especially text, uh, uh, asking questions about text, uh, probably because of my background at Adobe and working with documents and things like that. Uh, I'm much more interested in looking at text, asking questions, same for images as well. And at I.O., they announced actually they're going to be expanding Pro to an even larger uh, context window as well, which is pretty cool. So for working with the code, you have multiple options. I, I won't read these off screen. Uh, let me just show them all out here. Uh, I put a, a question mark by web uh, because you do have to use credentials, obviously, to work with Gemini. I don't know in what scenario you would use that in a public-facing website where you weren't 
talking to a serverless function or something on your server to proxy and, and obscure your API key. Uh, because it is a REST API, you could do it all in client-side JavaScript, uh, but you would have that API key there. there. And uh, Gen AI is, it does cost money. <laughs> so uh, I don't believe that you would do that, but Google's docs call it out. So I'm gonna call it out as well. Just keep in mind that I probably wouldn't do that. Actually using it uh, comes down to getting a key and then profit. And that's kind of me joking around, but it really is pretty much that simple. So uh, some screenshots here from AI Studio. And let me actually show you in another window here. This is AI Studio. Uh, this is essentially uh, their way to test the Gemini API via the web. Uh, and that is where Get API Key is. Let me go back to my slide deck. Uh, this UI, when I said things change often, this changes a heck of a lot. So kind of keep that in mind because I know a couple of days ago they changed how to work with images and I, I couldn't find it. So uh, just be aware. But you grab your API key. What what uh, What's really nice is that the entire process can be done via AI Studio. Um, I don't use the Google Cloud Console very often. Uh, so I was a little concerned about having to go in there and dig in the menus and all that and find stuff. Uh, but you can actually do everything via AI Studio, which is nice. Uh, I will say this screenshot, which I updated a couple of days ago, was already out of date. Uh, pricing is not gonna start until I think late May. Let me say right now, there is absolutely a free tier for Gemini. Um, and the way that you do that is essentially you set up your API key in a project and you don't include a credit card. Like it feels kind of dumb. <laughs> like it's a project with no credit cards or they can't charge you. Uh, but if you are concerned about your your uh, prices and uh, your, your charges and stuff, when you create the key, just use a new project. And you can see there, uh, it does look at your existing project. So it is easy to use that new project. And again, that's what I'd recommend. And then once you have that, you have a key. And you can actually also view it in AI Studio, which again, I find the Google Cloud Console hard to navigate because I don't use it very often. I appreciate that it's all within Studio. When you're done with that process, they give you a curl command that you can actually just copy and paste uh, to use. I will say that you can copy and paste if you're on a Unix system. These uh, backslashes won't work in Windows PowerShell. Um, I'm on a Windows machine now, but I'm using WSL, so it should work. And let me actually run this. And where is my, there we go. So uh, I took their code exactly uh, as they had. And the only thing I did was uh, swap out uh, Gemini API key to pick up an environment variable. And in theory, we go into demos, curl.sh, it should work. This again, verifying that I have a valid key. And there we go. We get lots of stuff back. I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, this output in a moment. Uh, but again, when I when I've talked earlier about kind of being surprised like at how quickly things worked, uh, this was part of it. I got my key, I ran my test, and it worked. And uh, I felt incredibly dangerous and excited at the same time. So looking at that response, uh, you could see that there is a text part. This is going to be your response, and it's way way long. I won't obviously read that. Uh, you also have more information about like why it finished as well as safety ratings. Uh, I'm not gonna talk a lot about safety ratings because I, I've only kind of hit them a couple times, but uh, essentially it's a way of saying, look at the prompt before it's sent and make sure it's not asking for something dangerous. And if, and if it does find something dangerous, stop it. I have never had to tweak this, maybe because I'm boring, uh, but I've never had to actually tweak this except once or twice to make it a bit more uh, allowing, if that makes sense. But you'll see in code in a second how you can tweak that. 
So I mentioned AI Studio. Uh, it lets you create and save prompts. Uh, I cannot emphasize just how important this is because whenever I think of some some dumb idea, excuse me, I want to build a demo that tests something or another. I always go into AI Studio and I write my prompts there. I look at the responses and if it feels like it's working well, um, it actually has a button on there that gives you the code, which makes it as easy uh, as can be. I take that and then I begin tweaking. So we are going to look at AI Studio. Uh, you will default into a new prompt. By the way, uh, and this is one more thing that changed in the last couple of days. When you make a new prompt, uh, they used to have three options. One was just freeform prompt, one was chat, and one was a structured prompt. I'm not gonna talk much about structured prompt today. Chat prompt is the only thing that you can do. And if you were only wanting to write one prompt and get a response, you still do chat. So I'll just do a chat prompt. Uh, you have your models up here, and I'm going to switch to 1.5 Pro because that's where I'm going, what I'm doing with. And I'm going to start with, uh, and let me make my screen a little bigger, y'all. If y'all can't see anything and need it bigger, just send me a chat. Why are, sorry, why is the sky blue? And how are cats involved in that process? hit run, and there we go. We can see thinking, and it's responding, and it lied to me by saying that cats are not involved in the process, uh, but it's all right. This output is actually going to be markdown, uh, and you can tweak that to be just JSON. You can see I could click there, and I could run it again. Let me... Uh, like I said, they keep uh, changing this. We'll run this again. And in theory now, I get a JSON response. And by the way, uh, in case you're curious, like how did it how did it create reason and relation? Uh, because I didn't specify what I wanted, Gemini just kind of decided for itself. And we'll talk more about uh, how to make that a little bit nicer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off JSON for now. And I'm actually going to say, Let's try something a bit more better, you know, more involved prompt and say, I'm going to type this so you don't see me. I'm like, sorry, I'm going to copy and paste this so you don't have to watch me type. But I'm basically adding uh, to, you know, why is the sky blue and how are the cats involved in process? You should answer at a level appropriate for a high schooler. And even if cats aren't really involved, you should make up a way they are. One of the first things I learned about working with prompt is that the more you tell it, the better the results you will get. You can also include things about how it should respond. So respond like you're talking to a elementary school person or a high school kid or a college graduate. But we'll run this again. And I love that Gemini was like, I'm gonna involve cats, uh, but in a completely made up way as well. And it is working. And I won't read all this for you because it would be kind of exciting, uh, kind of boring. But one thing I want to show here is get code. And from here, you get code that you can copy and paste. So I did that. And I will show you the actual code. And again, this is Node.js. This is exactly what um, I did in AI Studio. And I got from the uh, get code version. Uh, the uh, node code pretty much is essentially specify the model, get your API key. I changed their line of code to actually use an environment variable instead. And it really just comes down to making a new object for the generative AI work, uh, setting up the model. There could be a lot of parameters that you could pass there to tweak it, but you don't need to. I took their default code for how the model should work. I took their default code for safety settings. It had my prompt already. One thing I'll point out, let me actually go back to AI Studio here and do get code again. Uh, their default code will also include everything in there. So if I scroll past here, 
Oh, sometimes. Oh, there you go. Uh, it included the response from the model. Typically, all you want is that uh, initial prompt, and that's it. So that's what I have here. And then literally generate content, and that's it. And I'm going to log out the response. So if we go into Node, and I will run Node first.js, and it's going to work. I'll take a sip of coffee while it does. And then bam, I got my response. And that's like 50 lines of code or so. And for the most part, pretty simple, I think. So to make things a bit more complex, like about multimodal, uh, if you're like me and heard that word the first time and are like, what in the heck do they mean? It just means multiple types of input. Uh, and that includes images, text files, and videos. You can, and for this presentation, I'm gonna keep it simple. You can inline the media uh, as base64 if it is less than 20 megs. Anything over that should use the files API. Uh, they do document the files API, uh, but unfortunately it's all in Python now. I, I say unfortunately, I love Python. Uh, and in fact, if you don't know Python, you could probably look at their code samples and translate it to your language of choice. Uh, that file API allows for a lot more data, uh, up to two gig per file and 20 gigs total. Uh, and this is a temporary file storage. Uh, so uh, when you send your data up there, it's going to automatically erase it after a certain amount of time. And if you want, you could also erase it immediately. In terms of your specifics, I'll just scroll through here. You can, you can, look, at the, you can, yeah, you can look at the details if you want. Uh, but images, you cover all the most important ones, audio and video. Video, this is another change in the last couple of days. Uh, previously, in AI Studio, you could upload a video and ask questions. Via the API, the only way to work with video was if you yourself split the video into pictures. So you had to file, uh, you had to find some kind of um, pri uh, uh node library or python library etc that would split your image uh, your video into images and then send all that up to the api now you no longer need to worry about that which is nice uh, and again the docs cover uh, more information about the specifics of these file formats so let's go back here and i'm going to make a new prompt and it's going to warn me about, and by the way, you can save. And typically that's what I do. So if I'm building uh, demo one, for example, I will save it as demo one. That way I can come back to it later. Let's switch back to 1.5. And I'm going to say, tell me about this picture. And I'm going to click to upload to drive. And let's see if it has my recent pictures. It does. Let's pick the cat, insert it. That's my cat, Zelda. So if I click run now, it should talk to me about the cat. And I wouldn't agree that's Calico. I would say that is a mistake, uh, but it did find the lava lamp that's right next to me. And it's definitely looking uh, right at the uh, camera. It got that. Uh, now, uh, using this as code is relatively simple. I will say the JavaScript code was broken a couple of days ago, but it looks like they have fixed it. And yeah, they have actually changed this better than what I'm showing today, but that's all right. So they are showing the uh, files API. I'm going to show you the inline version, uh, the base64 version. And let's look at this here. Make this a little bit smaller. All right, so working with it in code, if you, again, want to work with something a bit smaller, what I did, let me scroll down here, is I built a simple application that lets me pass in a path to an image, and it's going to send that to Gemini and basically ask about the image. Uh, this is an example of where you may have a hard-coded prompt. In this case, describe what's in the picture. I could make that prompt definitely longer, uh, more in depth, et cetera. But all I'm doing basically is taking the image, converting it to base 64 and including it. You can see it right there. 
There's a convert to base 64. It's in this array of parts and all this gets sent to Gemini. So if I run image one.js, it's gonna ask me for a image and I have cat and dog. So let's run, let's run on the dog. And there we go. And by the way, that picture, if you want to see it, is a dog on a couch. And the response is, in case that's a little bit small, the picture shows a black lab ret retriever relaxing on a white floor quilt on a burgundy couch. I call that red. It probably is burgundy. Um, and it goes more and more into it. So using Gen AI to talk about what's in pictures, uh, what's in media, you know, a few more lines of code. And again, you have multiple options for, you know, I know it's going to be smaller. I know it's going to be larger. Um, I will say I have built a demo before that uses the camera on a web page. And on my mobile device, the issue I ran into is that because the camera was so good, uh, the, the picture was too large to send to Gemini. And I had to resize it beforehand. So that's something to keep in mind if you're, you know, working with large images to make it bigger and quicker than you think they would. So working with chat, uh, why? Number one reason is context. So if you're taking user input and the input is, uh, tell me about Mark Hamill, and then Gemini responds, you know, talking about him. If the user wants to respond, uh, with like, oh, okay, what did he do in the 90s? For example, he, what does he respond to? Uh, what does he refer to? He refers to Mark Hamill. Having a chat type interface or chat type API makes it so that the user can follow up and provide that information. Now, this is nothing special because really all this is, is sending the prompt, the initial prompt, getting the response, letting the user do a second question, and then you just send everything back. Now you can, if you want, actually manage all that. So you take their first input, you take the first response, you take the second input, and you just keep kind of glomming onto an array and sending it back and forth. Or in this case, uh, if you're using the SDK, they have a built-in method to make this a little bit easier. So as an example of that, and I'm just normally skipping over the stuff that's the same between examples. So like you don't need to see the imports, but this is basically how you do it. With the SDK, you start chat, you can send an existing history if you were to have one. And then all you need to do is do chat.send message. This chat object is actually gonna take care of handling uh, all of that history and sending it back and forth. So if we run this, no chat.js, it'll ask me for input. So yeah, let's, uh, who is Mark Hamill? And it is working. It's thinking, so I'll take a sip of coffee. And it's telling me key roles, especially his breakout role as Luke Skywalker. And if I say, how old is he? Again, because it has that context, it knows that he is referring to Mark Hamill. So code, incredibly simple. Uh, if for some reason you're not using the SDK, the only thing you have to do is going to keep that array of the user and the model response and just keep adding on to it as you work with Gemini. Let me kill that chat. All right. Next thing I want to bring up, system instructions. Uh, essentially, this is context about how the model should work, and that could be everything from how the model should act, uh, like uh, a teacher, like a drill instructor, uh, as well as how the output should be formed. Now, by the way, uh, this could be done in the prompt as well. Uh, earlier on, when I showed that first example, uh, NAI Studio, with the cat question that I made it long, longer by uh, telling it how it should respond. You can do it in the prompt as well, uh, but doing it in the system instructions feels like a bit more of a formal way. Um, it kind of gives you good separation between this is how I want you to act, and now here's the question that I am sending to you. Excuse me. 
Uh, this is currently marked as beta, uh, but again, with everything rapidly changing, heck, it could be not beta anymore. Uh, this is how it looks in code. And essentially, when I define my model, I add the system instruction and I'll show a demo. So actually, let me uh, let me do a new prompt, new chat prompt. And in system instructions, uh, you are a hyper active teenager who loves the Marvel movies, Marvel movies. And then explain, my prompt will be explain black holes to me. Now, in theory, what's going to happen is that the system instruction and the prompt will be run together. And my response should be like that. Oh, and some of the uh, emoji are not working. I'll have to log that as a bug later. Uh, but you can see like with BAM in there, it is acting like a comic book fan, kind of. Uh, but I was able to separate um, that system instructions from the prompt. If we look at the code for this, let me clear up my terminal here, make it a little bit better. So here it is in code. I have a function to process my prompt and I'm defining my model. And I'm saying, you know, you're a bot focused on astronomy topics and only astronomy. Uh, and I'm telling it that you should try to involve cats in some way. So this is still taking the prompt from uh, the command line. So if I do node si1.js, and I'll say, tell me about black holes. And this should involve cats in some way. And imagine a cosmic cat toy, et cetera. So it did. Now, one thing I'm going to try to do a little bit fun here. I'm going to ask about the stock market. Now, I said in my instructions that this was a bot focused on astronomy. It should kind of push back a little bit on me. And it says, I can't help you with that. My expertise lies in the celestial bodies of the universe. Uh, so if you're looking at building something that you need people to focus on one area and not break apart, this is a way of doing that. Uh, I'm going to skip that demo because I got about a little over five minutes left. So in terms of shaping responses, uh, I mentioned that the default is going to be JSON. Your prompt can ask for JSON, and so can the system instructions. And typically, I would do it in the system instructions. And you want to be specific. So don't just say, like, give me a JSON back, but say, I want JSON back, and I want it to have this particular shape. So these keys and these uh, this uh, form, essentially. There is a second <laughs> setting that is the response type so you need to actually do both or it's not going to work correctly so mentioned again gemini returns text in markdown even if you ask it for json it's going to be json and markdown so markdown uses three back ticks before it does code so if you ask for a json back uh, and don't change the response setting it'll give you the json wrapped as if you were putting it into a markdown file and you have to like strip that stuff out and you don't want that. So you want to do the response type. So basically, you want to do both. In code, that is as simple as doing response mime type application.json. And you would combine this with a system instruction asking for JSON back. And let's look at this JSON response. And let me scroll up and show you. This is that generation config uh, where it's I'm going to allow for a different MIME type. I'm going to default to text plane. All right. And what I'm doing here is basically showing you text plane versus uh, JSON response type back first. So we will do no JSON response. What are the top reasons cats are good pets? Run that like so. And again, I'm going to do it first for a plain text response and then a JSON response. And I'll give that some space. And it's thinking. And let me scroll up here. You could see this first response. It's all marked down. Nice big giant block of text. And scroll down to the line. 
and you could see the response here and it just kind of guessed it said you know top reasons uh and then an array of reasons so if i wanted this to be more specific let me go up here we could look at the second setting and here i pass in the prompt like i said normally i would do this in a system instruction but I very specifically said for the prompt given below, I want a reason key and a link to a reference. So if I run the same code, but call a JSON response to, and now I'm only gonna do that one call and just get JSON back. In theory, I'll get something that is pure JSON and has a defined uh, shape. And there you go. It's kind of hard to read in my terminal there, but I have a reason and I have links. And now if I'm building something that's gonna be used for a web app, uh, I, I'm, I have more assurity that the response is gonna be good. So I have some demos that uh, I'm just gonna mention that I have. I'm gonna show a link instead. I know I have about two minutes left. Uh, some quick things I'm not gonna cover, but I want you to know about. Uh, you have a, a feature called function calling, which is basically a way of saying, uh, instead of text response, give me code that I can actually call to my own functions. There is good documentation on prompt writing. It's a big topic, but the Gemini docs do a great job of condensing it to like five or 10 minutes of reading. You can tune your models. There's also a great uh, API cookbook for uh, Python notebooks. And lastly, Vertex, I'm not gonna read off screen here. It is essentially the enterprise version of this. Also, another big difference is that they don't have a free tier um, and they won't train on your data. Um, and A, the Gemini free tier, that's the only place where they train on your stuff. Uh, but if you are concerned about that, you can either go to the paid tier on AI, on, on AI Studio or go to Vertex. Um, a quick shout out to Alan uh, Furstenberg for being a big, useful helper for me and learning all this. Uh, before we go to questions, i share my blog real quick. Tags. If you want to see a bunch of my kind of fun examples, uh, I've been blogging about this for a while. And you can look at my examples and they're newest to oldest. And you could see my hello world uh, moving on to things like, I think the coolest demo I built was I have a web-based blackjack game. And I use Gemini to ask for help on like how I should play. Did not work terribly well, I'll be honest, uh, but it was a fun example to build. And uh, that is it. Do we have any questions? Uh, yes, currently there is only one question for the moment. And that is if you can put that link with the text for generative AI in the chat. <laughs> yes, uh, let me find the tab again. Right there. Okay. So you have the GitHub, perfect. Uh, I'm very interested in right now in hearing um, about all this uh, stuff from Gemini and about that free tire and everything. Um, is gonna be something available for the Vertex in the future or it's gonna stay permanently on the enterprise way? I do not know if there'll be a free tier for Vertex. I can say it seems like the pricing is so low that if you're doing hello world and like iterating as you make mistakes and doing, let's say a hundred calls a day, I'd be willing to bet that maybe pennies. I, I don't want to promise that. Um, I know I was looking at Bedrock for from Amazon. They didn't have a free tier, but when I was looking at the pricing, it was like, oh yeah, I can I can build a dumb little demo here locally and maybe hit a penny. So I mm -hmm. would say probably that level, that makes sense. So probably it's worth also looking at the paid version to see maybe it's not that much and it's yeah. even more helpful than the free tire. Yeah, I just, I love that that their free tier is like, don't give us a credit card. Like <laughs> that's <laughs> um, Now I will say, uh, and, and so they, they document the exact limits on the free tier uh, and it's, it's in my slide somewhere. It's, mm -hmm. It does mention two requests per minute, which feels a bit low. In my testing, I, I, I don't think I hit that. Like I showed that example of getting the plain text and JSON. I know I ran that a couple of times in a minute. And 
it, 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 I wasn't blocked. So they may be a little bit generous in terms of that free tier. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Really helpful with that information. So people, if you have any questions, let's see if something pops up. If not, I think, uh, thank you very much for joining and all this information. So as expected, this was something completely new. <laughs> compared with what we, we had before. So it was really interesting topic. So looks like this was it for the questions. <laughs> well, then I will say goodbye. <laughs> then thank you very much for joining. <laughs>